<laughs> Tuberculosis is as old as man himself. The bacillus is believed to have existed three million years ago. To the ancients, it was known as phthisis, which means wasting away. It was first described by Hippocrates, a pulmonary infection manifesting itself as weight loss, a cough, and blood in the sputum, which gradually led to death. In the 16th century, Italian physician Girolamo Fracastoro proposed the theory that the disease was transmitted by microorganisms invisible to the naked eye. In 1818, French physician René Lanec invented the stethoscope. That simple instrument revolutionized the diagnosis of the disease by auscultation. Never mind that they had no idea how it was spread or how to treat it. Sanatorium cures were the fashion. Clean air, rest, and a balanced diet were used to both isolate patients and treat them. In 1882, Robert Koch demonstrated the tuberculosis bacillus that bears his name. From then on, it was known that Koch's bacillus was spread through the air. Nicknamed the White Plague in the 19th century, tuberculosis was a great romantic, carrying off Anton Chekhov, Frederick Chopin, Franz Kafka, and the Bronte sisters. During that century, it was improvements in living conditions and hygiene, not medical advances, that slowed the disease. It wasn't until the 20th century that a vaccine, the BCG, was developed, and above all, that a series of antibiotics was discovered, making effective treatment possible. The disease then faded into obscurity in rich countries. Until the 1980s, when it made a comeback due to the AIDS epidemic. People with HIV have weakened immune systems and developed the disease more easily. At the same time, there's been an increase in drug resistance strains. Today, with an annual toll of 1.3 million deaths and 9 million patients, 500,000 of them multi-drug resistant, including children, the resurgence of TB is an emergency.